Brent, when I returned to uh, Reno, I was um, somewhat surprised not to see an organization here that most communities of the uh, size of Reno had, uh, either a World Affairs Council or a Council on Foreign Relations affiliate. Uh, and, and I found that there was uh, two things, widespread interest in having such an organization, and two, an amazing uh, group of individuals who lived in this area with extensive experience in the national security arena. So the two melded and we began meeting informally and that later led to the creation of a nonprofit called the National Security Forum of Northern Nevada and it's been operating very well for 17 years. That is remarkable and this is largely possible because of your background which we have covered in, a, in another video but you had military experience you had experience in the White House. You worked in the nonprofit world teaching conservation. You probably had a unique view on the need to understand world affairs. To those of us who may not get that importance, why should we care? The, the events around the world can be very confusing. Uh, there are wars going on in Syria, in the Asian area, in Africa. There are problems of global uh, poverty and, and today more sophisticated uh, concerns such as the ability of uh, hostile entities like in Russia with uh, enormous cyber uh, capabilities as well as other advanced scientific methodology. We need to have an understanding of the threats that are posed by various entities and what the United States and its allies can do to ameliorate th th those char uh, challenges. Give us an idea of what a National Security Forum meeting is like. And let's take one example. Uh, we had Ray Hufstetler, who was a former executive director of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, speak on, on numerous occasions. Uh, what are the implications from uh, both the military involvement, the deployment, and the political arena. Well, we had uh, Assistant Secretary of State Mark Kimmett, Assistant Secretary for Political Military Affairs, uh, come here to Reno to speak. So that's a general uh, idea of the high quality speakers that we have available. Drop a few more names. Give us a, a few more ideas of topics that you've covered. Uh, cyber is obviously uh, an important one. And so we're fortunately to have Tony Rucci <coughs> who has an organization called Insider Threats and frequently is in this area and we've had Tony as well as uh, folks at the university looking at the cyber challenge. Uh, we also understand uh, that the global environment is shaped to a great extent by economic forces and trends and we're fortunate to have people like uh, Jerry O'Driscoll <coughs> who formerly worked with the Federal Reserve here, as well as uh, professors from the University of Nevada, Reno, uh, assisting us on that. A very interesting area, what about the possibility of bio attacks, uh, utilizing virulent diseases uh, as it we've seen in the past with, say, uh, smallpox or, <coughs> uh, you know, with the uh, swine flu. And so we've had uh, panels dealing with bioterrorism. Terror uh, it's a growing and, con and concerning threat. It's remarkable how many of these experts are really local people. And it's also remarkable how many you've been able to pull in from Washington. Well, we are fortunate in one respect in the northern Nevada, northern California area, like Lake Tahoe especially, uh, it's been an attractive place for uh, former high-ranking military and importantly civilian and intelligence uh, community officials to uh, retire. You know, for example, Keith Hansen uh, lives at Tahoe and he was a former national intelligence officer uh, looking at st uh, issues relating to strategic, strategic programs and uh, proliferation. So we do have a coterie of great expertise in this area we're able to, to tap. But sometimes we don't, and I still have connections in the uh, diplomatic and military area, and I'll call my friends in Washington and say, you know, you, you're on your way to Japan, or you're going to go to California to speak to this group. Stop in Reno, because uh, you owe it to us. 
And uh, we've had great success in being able to, to uh, convince uh, high-ranking officials to uh, come here. This has been a remarkable growth. You started very small. With 12 people meeting at the Gold and Silver for breakfast to, as I said in our recent meetings at the Sands, we have over 250 to 300 people uh, now attending. And what do you see as, as the need that this serves in this community? What, what role will it play as it moves forward? As this moves forward, we will be the premier organization that provides uh, informed commentary and creates programs relating to critical national security issues, be that military and defense, be that uh, bio, uh, medical areas, global economics. This will be the organization that brings speakers with recognized expertise to address our group regarding these most critical national security concerns. Dr. Tyers Cobb, the founder of National Security Forum, thank you very much for being with us. If you haven't caught one of the meetings, you should check us out online and see a little bit about what we have to offer and come be part of the conversation.